All right, it's that time. We're gonna finally break down my favorite new irons of 2021 in the game improvement category. I've been looking at all the best irons. We've looked at the TaylorMade Sim 2s. We've looked at the Callaway Apex. We've looked at the Ping G425s, the Wilson D9s, and the Cobra Rad Speeds. And I'm finally ready to give you my top picks. So if you're looking for irons in 2021 in the game improvement category, you're about to find out what I think as a five handicapper, as a mortal man, as someone who hits good contact probably 80 to 90 percent of the time, but that other 20 percent of the time uh, could be less than perfect. I'm going to give you my top picks of 2021. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, so here's the criteria that I'm using, and it's by no means perfect, maybe. And if you've got better ideas, I'm all ears. Let me know in the comments down below what you think I'm missing or if you've got specific questions to these. But today, I'm going to cover these categories. I'll break each of them down per club of what I think is the best in each category, and then we're going to crown a Let's Play Through Game Improvement Iron winner for 2021 here at the end. So, here are the categories. We're going to be looking at distance. We're going to be looking at workability. We're going to be looking at feel. We're going to be looking at stopping power. We're going to be looking at just aesthetics and overall look of these clubs. And we're going to be looking at accuracy. Those are the criteria that we'll be judging these clubs on today. And we will crown a winner for each of those categories. Because in 2021, it's really, really hard to make a bad decision. I think all of these clubs have their standout features. And each one of them does something really remarkable. Now, I do recommend that you subscribe to the channel. And here's why. We've got a lot of videos that we're continuing to release of all of these clubs. So if you want to see a more in-depth review on each of them, what I liked about them, specifically, you'll want to go back to those videos and it's easy to do that if you do hit subscribe. Let's move forward. All right, so the first category we're going to cover is distance. And the reason we're covering it first is because it's the category that I personally need the most help with. And many of you might as well, if you're looking at game improvement irons, you might want that extra little kick. Coming in at the bottom spot is going to be the Cobra Rad Speeds. I averaged 82.2 in terms of miles per hour of my swing, which translated into 162 yards of carry and 173 yards after the rollout. Carry when it comes to irons is really what matters, by the way, but I will also list rollout for you here. Coming in at number four for me, looks like it's going to be the Ping G425s. The G425s, I was swinging at 83.4 and actually the highest swing speed of any of the clubs I tested. I was averaging 163 carry and it was rolling out to 174. If we look at the Wilson D9s, now these are the furthest pressed forward. I was swinging at 82.6 miles per hour, which translated to 167 carry rolling out to 179. So really good numbers there, but you're going to expect that because the loft is so much greater than the others. Coming in at number two on the list is going to be the Callaway Apex, which I swung at 82 miles per hour flat. That carried 165 and it rolled out a little bit further. So really close there. I guess it could have gone either way there, uh, depending on the day and the conditions and my exact swing speed. But I'm going to give the edge there to the Callaways in terms of rollout at least. And then coming in at number one, which might be a little confusing, but my swing speed was way down on this test. My swing speed was almost five miles per hour lower than any of the other clubs I tested, and yet that ball flew as far or further. And when I hit this club really well, I hit it really clean in center contact. It flew the furthest of all of them by a few yards. That's going to be the Sim 2, which is going to come in at 78.3 miles per hour swing speed, carrying to 166 and rolling out to 179. So there's our top five when it comes to distance. So our next category here is going to be feel. And that's a category that's definitely subjective. The way I like a club to feel might be different than the way you like a club to feel. But in general, I think we all sort of know something that feels quote unquote good. So I'm gonna do my best here on at least what I think was the best feeling of the bunch. 
for me, the best feeling club of the bunch was the Ping G425. This thing felt buttery smooth. When I hit the shot, it felt good coming off the club face. Now I will say all of the irons in this game improvement category felt so much better than the game improvement irons of yesteryear. It used to be that you actually had no feel to them. They felt like you were hitting a, a brick or something. These ones all give you some sort of feedback. In terms of feedback, the Sim 2s give you instantaneous feedback on how you hit a good shot. Same thing with the Cobra Rad Speeds. I really liked how those clubs gave you immediate feedback. The Callaway Apex and the Wilson D9s do as well. I'd probably go Ping G425, Sim 2, Rad Speed, Apex, Wilson D9. Okay, so that, that would be like my top five there but all of them in their own ways do a much, much better job than the golf clubs used to do in this category. And I was really, really pleasantly surprised because it's been a while, honestly, since I've tested these sorts of clubs. I expected them to not have much feel at all and they all did perform. So really happy with all the clubs in this category this year, but the Ping G425 takes it. Our next category is another subjective one, and that's going to be looks and aesthetics of the clubs. How do these clubs set up? That is important when you're thinking about a game improvement club because a lot of people don't want to be staring down at a shovel at their feet. A lot of folks considering these clubs might be in an older age bracket and they might be coming from a blade that they played in their 20s or 30s and now they're moving into something that's going to give them a little bit more distance at the expense of looks oftentimes. Well, these clubs for the most part are starting to look really good. The manufacturers have gotten really adept at hiding some of those game improvement features. On this category, I'm gonna start from my least favorite to my favorite. And we're gonna start with my least favorite being the Ping G425s. So the look of the Ping G425s just does not suit my eye in any way. It's got this sort of squared off rectangly shape. I don't like that. Uh, they're very thick. The cavity is very, very deep, even though they've tried to hide it in some ways. And it's got a very, very thick top line. And the offset is a lot more than I would normally like to play with. So for me, the G425s are at the bottom of the list when it comes to aesthetics. Moving up the line is the Wilson D9s. Now, I did mention in my video about the D9s that they have this classic look to them, and that's true. On the back side, it has sort of a more modern look, but the front looks more classic, and I do like that but I've got to rate these in some sort of order. So number four is gonna be the D9s. Number three on our list is going to be the Sim 2s. These are a very, very good looking iron, a little chunkier than I would like, but again, you don't see this big giant cavity. And I think they've done good work here trying to hide some of those game improvement features. Coming in at number two on our list is the Callaway Apex. And the Apex looks really, really good, in fact, almost doesn't look like it's a cavity back. The top line is a little bit bigger uh, than I would like to see, but it doesn't look too, too bad. And it just looks good sitting in a golf bag. They use some nice black and, and chrome features there that, that make it a pretty sharp looking club. Now, number one was easy for me. And for some interesting reasons, I chose the Cobra Rad Speed as the best looking club of the bunch. And they've done a credible job of hiding the cavity on the backside with some, I don't know if it's a hard plastic or PVC or something. It basically gives it the shape of a more players looking iron and you don't really see or notice that cavity as much. But the big improvement in looks here comes from something that to me is like devilishly simple. On the top line of these clubs, they use a piece of carbon fiber. So you've got metal, carbon fiber, metal. And that kind of tricks your eye into thinking that these clubs are much thinner than they are. And so when you're looking down at them at a dress, you almost don't even feel like you're playing a game improvement iron. That was really spectacular to me and that's why it gets my number one vote in terms of aesthetics. And aesthetics are important. This isn't just some shallow thing. You've gotta feel confident staring over the ball and what you're holding in your hand has to instill confidence in you. And I think the Cobra Rad Speeds, for me at least, do that the best. Our next category is workability. Workability is how you can move the ball either left or right. And again, that can be really, really important, especially as you're trying to play better 
golf and you need to hit a draw or you need to hit a fade around the trees or something like that. That is going to be really important to a lot of golfers out there. Again, especially ones that might be moving from their blades or something else into this game improvement category and are used to being able to work the ball a little bit more. I gotta say, this was a really hard category for me. In terms of workability, I think I put Callaway towards the bottom, maybe at the bottom. They are really good in terms of dispersion and they might rank number one here in accuracy. We'll find out here in just a second but there's the balance there. So if a club always kind of goes straight, it's gonna be harder to work the ball. So Callaway is gonna fall in there at the bottom for me. Coming at the number four position for me is going to be the Cobra Rad Speeds. And while they do have some workability built into them, I was not really able to draw or fade the ball the way I like to. Okay, so again, it, it comes down to those game improvement features and it being that balance. Number three on my list is going to be the Wilson D9s. These had some pretty good workability to them. I was able to move the ball and get more of the shot shape that I wanted. Coming in at the number two spot for me during my tests is going to be the TaylorMade Sim 2. I was able to work these balls really, really well, both right and left at ease. And it seemed again to work more like my current irons where I could do what I wanted with those clubs. Now the number one club in terms of workability for me was again a big surprise and that's the Ping G425s. I was able to really work these clubs both right and left with the seven iron that I was testing. And I think if you take these out onto the course, you're going to have very similar results. These clubs seem to have a lot going for them. All right, we're coming into the accuracy category here. In terms of accuracy, overall, how tight is that dispersion and how well you can hit these clubs? All of them performed really, really well during my tests. So the gap from bottom to top is going to be quite a bit lower than some of the other categories we've looked at here. In terms of accuracy, for me, there was a clear winner and that is the Callaway Apex. I had incredibly tight dispersion. In fact, looking at them against my current gamers, these clubs were about 50 to 75% more accurate than what I'm currently playing. And I only had a one-way miss. I tend to overdraw the ball. That's just the swing that I have. But it was never fading on me. It was always either straight, almost down the line. I painted the line with these clubs. Or sometimes it was just ever so slightly off to the left. And I gotta say, I was really impressed by what the Callaway Apex can do. So coming in at number five for me was the Wilson D9. Again, by no means bad, because all the clubs in this category are good, but they took the lowest spot for me on this one. Coming in at number four for me was the Cobra Rad Speed, and this had a lot to do with just less than center contact, getting, getting a little bit further right and left, and not getting quite as much distance as number three on our list, which is the Sim 2. The Sim 2 does an incredible job, as does the Rad Speed, honestly. However, definitely, if I've got to rate them, that comes in right in the middle of the pack. And number two on the list is going to be the Ping G425s. I almost could not hit a bad shot with them. I think I mentioned that in the video. If I hit it off the toe, off the heel, any of that, it all felt very similar and the dispersion was really, really tight and I really liked what the Ping G425s could do. So at number five, we've got the Wilson D9s. At number four, the Rad Speeds. Number three is the Sim 2s. Number two is the Ping G425s. And number one, getting the top spot here for the first time on our list is the Callaway Apex. So there you have it in terms of accuracy. <laughs> Now the final category we're looking at here is stopping power. How well do these balls hold the greens? If you hit a nine iron into the green, is it going to actually hold on those fast and firm greens? That does make a big difference to a lot of us golfers out there. So we've got to rank it. So coming in at number five on our list is going to be the Wilson D9. Now this club did launch pretty well, but the spin numbers were on the lowest of anything we measured at 3,798. Coming in at number four for me is going to be the Callaway Apex. And again, these had a very nice peak height. In fact, they flew the highest at 35 yards, but the spin numbers there again below 4,000. 
and those spin numbers were at 3,942 RPMs. And by the way, just to give you a little bit of a reference, the current Iron's Eye game spin at 4,800 RPM. So all of these are quite a bit lower than that, but we're trying to get as close to that as possible. Coming in at number three on our list is the Ping G425. Now the Ping G425 had a little bit lower launch at 29 yards, and the spin was at 4,163 RPMs. Coming in at number two was the TaylorMade Sim 2, and this was a toss-up, really. It really could have gone either way. I gave the edge to the TaylorMade Sim 2 because it had a little bit of a higher peak height at 31 yards, and the spin was very close at 4,083 RPMs. But our number one spot was pretty clear, and that's the Cobra Rad Speed. The Cobra Rad Speed had a nice launch at 32 yards, and the spin was a little bit higher than the rest of the pack at 4,258. RPMs. So the Cobra Rad Speed takes our top spot when it comes to stopping power. All right, it's time to crown an overall winner. Coming in at number five for me is going to be the Wilson D9 Irons. I did like them a whole heck of a lot. And again, it's really hard to sort of separate all of these. The Wilsons, however, I will say, are the best value clubs on the market right now. So if you're willing to sacrifice just that little extra bit and still have an incredible club that launches really high and does a lot of things really well, the Wilson D9 is going to be a great choice. But for me on my list, this is going to come in at number five. Coming in at number four overall, and it's very hard to choose these clubs because again, this is where the differences are so minor, are going to be the Callaway Apex. Now the Callaway Apex, again, for me, had the tightest dispersion. So if you're looking for a really, really accurate club, I think the Callaway Apex might be the best choice on the market. On this list, it's going to come in at number four. Coming in at number three for me is going to be the Cobra Rad Speed Irons. Again, for me, the aesthetics of these club are second to none, and the way that you almost feel like you're holding a player's iron, when in fact you're holding something packed with technology, I really like the way they did that. These irons have very nice distances to them. I wish I could work them a little bit more. However, they're a really, really solid choice for a lot of people. And on top of that, they have some really cool technology built into it, including grips that have Arco software built into them so that you can actually track stats. Super cool. So if you're going to geek out over technology, the Cobra Rad Speed is the best club for that. Coming in at number two on my list is the most forgiving club of the bunch, the one that I felt like I couldn't even hit a bad shot, and that's going to be the Ping G425. So if you're looking for ultimate forgiveness, this is probably going to be the best club for you. And again, that comes at the expense maybe of the aesthetics. It's definitely the most game improvement looking of clubs but it also has a lot of other features that I think you're really going to like. Taking our top spot, probably not any surprise if you actually watched my original review of it, it's the Sim 2. I think overall it does everything really, really well. It's got the longest distance, it's got really great workability, it's got pretty good spin numbers, it's got pretty good height, and it's got pretty good looks. So all in all, for me, if I had to choose one set of irons in the game improvement category in 2021, it would absolutely be the TaylorMade Sim 2s. <laughs> Guys, that was a lot of talking. I'm not used to talking that much. Believe it or not, I'm actually a much better listener. So I'd love to get your comments down below on what you thought about each of these irons, what you're thinking about picking out for yourself, or what you've tried at your local golf shop. Again, if you want to see each of these reviews, I will leave links down below so you can get a more robust picture of what these clubs can do. And I do hope you hit subscribe because throughout the year we'll be continuing to look at some of the best golf clubs and golf technology that is on the market. Coming up very soon on the channel, we're going to be breaking down our top five drivers of 2021. So we hope you'll come back for that one as well. I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.